Here is how you take your construction business from zero to a million dollars. We are gonna be working it stage by stage as your business grows. When the business just starts, everybody wants to be big shot. Everybody wants to be called boss. Everybody wants to have their own merch. Everybody wants to have all of these things. Just hold down a second and go on your own business direction. Those things are not needed. Nobody knows you. You're just with a few clients. You're making just a few hundred bucks a day. You're starting to get to the two, three hundred, four hundred, maybe a thousand dollar day and you're shedding your pants because you got a good job. That's how it starts. It's excitement. Excitement is what keeps you there as a contractor, as a construction worker. When you start making the first few bucks that you said, oh shit, I'm making more than my own job. Then you start getting excited about the thing you're doing. At this point, when you are at zero, you don't even call it a company yet. You call it a side hustle. Even though you did left your job for it, you still don't quite sure where is this thing gonna take you. And I say thing just because at this point, even though you call it a company, it's still not formed as a company. When you just start, one of the first issues you're going to have is that you're going to think you need help for everything. As a new business owner or construction business owner, if you are thinking to hire people the day you start, you're already broke. You haven't made enough to pay anybody. You need to be the force behind that company. You need to be the one busting your chops to get to where you need to get to. From driving to the jobs, to finding the client, to invoicing, to doing the estimates, to driving and wasting your time half the time because people just want your number. Advertisement, that's when you're starting to learn to, you know, how to talk to people. If you're gonna print a flight in your house, if you're gonna hire a company to do it. You're too new to it, just hustle. Continue to work on your art, on your craft. Keep getting your skills better at what it is that you do and anything else that you're learning in the process. Then that company that used to be zero gets to grow a little bit. I was personally making over $100,000 a month by myself, but I was literally killing myself. My body couldn't take it anymore. I still deal with some of the issues that I caused myself at the very beginning, but I believe that was the best way to make money. Listen, I'm making money every month, but it took literally almost my family and my health. So when you hit a $100,000 stage in, in a month for your business, what you should be doing is starting to look for talent. Start looking for those people that are gonna make your business greater. Either it is on office or on the field. Now, do I really believe you need a secretary at this point? Probably not but it wouldn't be a bad idea to start putting somebody on the place just in case you get busier. That's what we all want. Then you hire two guys to take a portion of the jobs that you wouldn't have to say no if you were by yourself. At this stage, you should be concentrating on the quality of work that the people that you hire are doing at the same time that you're starting to downsize on the amount of work that you are personally taking. This is a very important part of the business. If you have your head down with your tools and you are working 24 seven, you have no time to find new clients to keep your two other workers busy, which means they will end up taking the work that you are doing and you end up with drilling your thumbs. You end up doing nothing. So you are not preparing the business for growth. As you are doing these two continuously, you're still gonna feel tired. You're still gonna think that you're just working for yourself versus like having a business. Now, the business is now proving you that it can make the money. So it's time to double down. Once you start doubling down, it doesn't take very long to get from 100,000 to $200,000. What you should be doing at $200,000 is keep searching for talent. At this point, you are not needed to be on the tools. You are needed on the field but you are not needed on the tools. Your time should be focusing on client, client relations, vendor relations, working relations, and finding new talent. Your workers will become need more needed and more needed as your company is growing. So now you need to start becoming known. People on the field that you chose to work on or what your business is from need to start to know you. Why? People only come to work for you if you are somebody of interest to them, if the culture in your business is correct, if the people working for you have good things to say about you or the amount of money that you pay them. That's how you attract talent to you versus having to go through every job site to try to snap people from other companies. What I did at this point was I hired talent and I thought I was needed 
with the talent to make sure they were doing things correctly. I made a horrible mistake at this point. So I had to lose that money, go back to do it myself and have to come back to that point. That was horrible on my end. I wish I knew what I'm telling you at that point. Now, when you are in the $200,000 mark, at this point, you do need somebody in the office. Otherwise, you will spend all your time buried in that office. We go back to the same thing I said for $100,000. You're not looking for clients. You're doing paperwork. You're dealing with your estimates, invoices. You're dealing with clients and, and, and service calls and all of these other things. Things that your guys left wrong. You have to make checks for your workers. You got to deal with taxes. You got to deal with all these other things. You don't have enough time during the day or during the month to take care of this. So you need to put somebody in place. You need to hire yourself and manage your office. Now you've been doing the $200,000 per month for let's say 12 months to 15 months now. You have a, a little bit more of a game plan. You started to understand that saying no to jobs is not getting you anywhere. So you're concentrating on finding talent, new clients, new business, new jobs. You have an office manager who now needs help. So as this time period, continues to grow now you have hit big boy pants now you started getting to netting five hundred thousand dollars a month or starting to do five hundred thousands a month in business now you're sitting in the big boy table once you sit in the big boy table things change a little bit at this point to your workers you become the guy that never works to your office you're the guy that does the only time they work when they show up to the office everybody starts seeing you different within your company but you're still the same guy it's just the roles have changed. Now you have to look for clients, but then now you have different business ventures that you're getting into. You will see how life changes very rapidly from the 200,000 to the 500,000, because now you're getting into different areas that you never thought you were going to get to. And what you need to do is be open-minded. You're gonna lose as many employees as you're hiring. Your office staff is gonna disappear and this new one is gonna come in place. But as you have your systems in the company in order, now you have other people training your people. Now, that's not even you anymore. Now you start getting to the lifestyle that you want. You don't have to live like a broke ass anymore. You don't have to be on the job at four o'clock in the morning. You can start taking time to do things for yourself. You start exercising, you play golf, or you go play a sport, or you walk your children, whatever the case it is. Time has become available to you. When time becomes available to you, it's very impressive what you can do with it. You have become smarter through this entire period of time to get into the 500,000. You got wiser, and I hope you had somebody by your side teaching you what to do with this. Everybody needs help along the way. At 500,000, most definitely you need help, and I'm talking personal help. From business coaching, to consulting, to even on other areas of endeavor, like real estate, like doing flips, doing wholesale, doing rentals, buying apartment complexes, getting into other businesses. That's what rich people do, but wealthies do it better. Now you're at a point that growing it from where you're at, from the 500,000 to the million dollars, to make you a $12 million company a year, is not as hard as you thought when you were at 100,000. Now you have the connections around the new environment that you're rolling yourself within. You are going to different events where people at your level or higher are in presence where they need what you do. At this point, you started to become really good at selling yourself, at selling what you do and everything else in between. Not only can you run your business, you can run it without being there. You can run your guys without having to call them. You have somebody in place for that. You got your time back, you have a bunch of knowledge, and now you have a bunch of people that you didn't know before. The next transition from 500,000 to a million it's inedible. It's just going to happen. I didn't even notice when it happened. That's how inedible it is. When I was at the $500,000 stage, I started thinking like, oh crap, I can just stay home. Then I learned that I can't anymore. My personality, how I am and who I am started taking me to other places, to meeting other great people, to meeting great coaches, to meeting great mentors, to greeting people that eventually was going to take me to the million. Now, this number sounds like a lot. In business, it really isn't. To get to that number, now you're talking that you have 30 employees plus, you have nine trucks plus, you have six office staff plus, now you're paying for a building, you're paying for all of this. Believe me, it's not that much money, but it does get you to other doors. 
when you get to this point, please make sure your fucking head doesn't blow like a balloon. You're still the same guy that started a company with zero, possibly 10 years prior. You haven't changed, your mentality changed. The people around you has changed. In this period of time, and I'm only saying it at this point because this is when it becomes the most noticeable, you will learn that you didn't change, but the people around you did. Your circle becomes smaller, your family becomes tighter, who you do business with becomes greater, and certain numbers will not scare you anymore. But when you get to this point, a lot of people have the tendency to get cocky, to get a little bit on the, uh, I did it, I made it. Guess what? Everything can go to shits in one day. Now, if it goes to shits in one day, people is like, oh no, you lost everything. Well, not really. Everything you learn on the journey to get to the million dollars a month has taught you the process, systems, work ethic, company model, company values, company core. Now for you, a million dollars is just a matter of selling a couple of assets to get back to money. Now, just remember this, when you started at zero, if somebody didn't pay you $10,000 on a job, you were dead broke. You didn't have money for gas. At this point, because of all the knowledge that you got, when you're broke, you can still put together a million to get started again. So you're not as broke as you think, you just everything went to shits but you know how to get out of the hole. That's the advantage of getting into the bigger rooms, into the bigger tables and having somebody guiding you along the way on how to do this is that when you think you have a big problem, for some people in that room, your problem ain't shit. For them, it's just a Monday morning and they show you how to get out of your Monday morning problem like if it was never there. Now you have the guidance, the coaching, the people around you that can help you not only get to the million again, but go past that number. So where your dreams are actually too small. If this video was any help for you, please subscribe and write me any question in the comments. I'm here to answer anything you have. I hope to see you guys in the field.